I'm Chris Nessie, host of Behind the Mic, Voices of the EPN, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. Ninth grade can be challenging. Let's experience it together. And today, we have a unique episode that I'm really excited to bring to you. Normally, we talk to students that are in ninth grade. We talk to teachers that are teaching ninth grade or have something to do with ninth grade. And we try to get what's going on with them right now in the world and try to figure out to give tips and strategies for students that are in ninth grade or will be in ninth grade to how to best, you know, overcome and work through that year. But today's episode features Dora Schaefer, and Dora Schaefer is not a student at Emmaus High School. She was a student at Emmaus High School in her freshman year in 1938. So Doris is 99 years old. Uh, we had a hookup through the Emmaus Historical Society. So thanks to Jeannie Harrickle for helping us out to set this interview up. And we were able to talk to Doris in her house in Emmaus, 99 years old, still living in her house and was an awesome, awesome interview to be able to uh, look back on the history of Emmaus High School, to look back what her ninth grade experience was like. So at the beginning of the episode, she gets right into it. She remembers her classes, her teachers, field trips, all sorts of stuff. So we can all hope that when we are 99 years old, that we are sharp and, and remember as much as Doris did. So we asked her different questions about what it was like to be at Emmaus in 19. Uh, 30, 38, 39 school year. Um, you know, she talks to us about memories she had, what she did in school, some of the activities she was involved in, things she learned in all of her subjects. And uh, we end the episode with going through her 1942 senior yearbook in which we talk about all the different things that she was involved in during her time in Emmaus. And then we sprinkle in some other stuff as well. And she ends by giving us an amazing uh, tip for ninth grade students that spans all generations, all years. So this was, you know, I've done 120 episodes of the podcast about, and this is right up at the top with one of the, my favorites that I've ever done and had the chance to speak with. And I'm excited to potentially go back and, and chat with Doris again to get some more information. So as I mentioned, this is a collaboration with the Emmaus Historical Society. So thanks again to Jeannie Harrickle for helping to set this up. And what our hope is, is that we're going to continue to talk to people that she can find for me through the Historical Society that will give you what it was like to be in ninth grade uh, through the decades and through the years. So we're really excited to be able to feature this as kind of maybe like a monthly thing going forward. So you'll get a chance to learn what it was like in ninth grade all throughout the different years. So you can check them out at EmmausHistoricalSociety.org or you can look around and see what they're offering um, you know, in the community. They're always kind of doing cool stuff. So thanks a lot to Jeannie Harrickle for setting this up. And like always, if you're interested in what we've done previously on the podcast, uh, we have all of our episodes and things up at ninthgradeexperience.com. Um, you can hit us up on all the socials, TikTok. We just passed 500,000 total views on TikTok. So thank you so much to everybody that's uh, taken in the content there. And as always, we have our pieces of the interview up there, all the highlights and stuff. So that's exciting to share. Um, you can check us out on uh, Instagram as well at Ninth Grade Experience and on YouTube. We have YouTube and YouTube Shorts. So we put our full episodes on YouTube as well as the YouTube Shorts as well too. So lots of different places to get your Ninth Grade Experience content. And um, you know, we're going to continue to do these episodes. We're going into the month of November. So we're going to focus on some gratitude stuff in the month of November. And uh, we're really excited to be able to bring all this to you. So uh, without any further delay here, I want to share with you this amazing conversation with 99-year-old Emmaus resident and 19, class of 1942 and Emmaus High School freshman in 1938-39, Dora Schaefer. So welcome everybody to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. We are doing, a, we have a unique opportunity here today. So I reached out to the Emmaus Histor Historical Society to uh, get us in touch with some of our community's uh, members of our community that have graduated Emmaus High School from many years. And when I reached out to Jeannie Harrickle, who is um, one of the people involved at the Historical Society, she gave me the name of a woman who is 99 years old 
And she was an Emmaus graduate in 1942. And I'm here with her today. Her name is Doris Schaefer. She still lives in Emmaus. And she was very excited to share some of her ninth grade experience with us here and to share some of the history of Emmaus. So Doris, thanks a lot for joining us today. So Doris, um, you know, we, we... We've talked to kids a lot about what their ninth grade experience is like. We've been doing this show for five years now, so we've gotten a chance to hear what ninth grade was like for students in the last couple of years. But your your freshman year of high school was 1938. So take us back to 1938. What was Emmaus High School like in 1938? Emmaus High School was on North Street between 5th and 6th Street, and it was a two-story building. We had to walk up and down the steps to get to our classes. And I had, when we were oriented, when I was in ninth grade, we had to meet in the auditorium. And there they decided that we would choose which class we were taking, either the academic, the uh, commercial, the general, or the vocational. So what we did was they assigned us to each section. Those who were the academic were assigned classes for academic toward going to college. And in the general course, they couldn't make up their mind one way or the other, so they took a general course. Okay. But we all got just about the same subjects. History, English, math, um Let's see. Oh, uh, we had one teacher that I have to talk about. It was Mr. <laughs> Benfield, who taught us literature and took us up to Kutztown State College where they put on Shakespearean plays. And I don't know whether they still do that today, but we went as a class for his class and saw As You Like It and introduced us to Shakespeare. And this was it. Was this in ninth grade that he took you? In ninth grade. So here we are, and we often talk a lot on the show about like teachers that might make an impact or people that make an impact. And here you are. It's from 1938. You still remember the name of your ninth grade English teacher, where they took you, and the impact that they have. That's that's so cool to hear that. Like, so when you talked about that first day, so was it like the first day of school they took everybody, and that's when they picked your classes? <laughs> And we, we went to, we had a whole room where we had our desks that, uh, uh, that we, were, we were assigned to. And we would come into school then after that and sit at that desk and wait until it was time to go to class. So do you remember how many people were in your class in 1938? There were 116 ninth graders 116 and, ninth graders so now currently we have about six to seven hundred at the school so we we've grown quite a bit from 1938 but that's that's pretty cool so you had an assigned desk that you went in on the first day and then you picked your classes yeah and we we, we brought our books to school and put them in that desk and that's where our pencils our pens and uh, we kept them there and whatever book we needed we took and went to the class we had English, math, and as I say, literature. Um, and Miss Busher was an English teacher at that time, and she also taught French. And she was from Emmaus originally, and uh, she spoke with a slight Pennsylvania Dutch accent. <laughs> and so a Pennsylvania Dutch person teaching you French, that's kind of an interesting she story. She taught us French and with an accent. And when I'd come home and I'd read my French to my dad, he would say, now wait, Doris, we'll correct that. My father helped me with that. So I, I, I took French. I had a choice of German or French. But since I was in the German area, I decided I'd like to try a different language. I was going to say that because Emmaus is traditionally like a German kind of area, and you took the opposite. So do you remember, I'm trying to think here, like, so you came in on that first day. Do you remember which, you talked about four different tracks. Which track were you in? Which what? 
when you picked when you had to pick the academic or yeah. the general do you I remember was, which one you were in i was an academic oh so you so at that point so at that point there was no restriction on like if you were a, a, a woman you weren't restricted to which one you needed to pick well see i i knew i was going to go to school because I, I, my father and i talked about a lot of things yeah so you went so you, so you at that point already and I, so again this is like one of those things where like you know, at that point, we're still talking like women are still like getting into colleges, those kinds of things. So even in 1938, you knew, like, I'm sure there was like a track that might have been like preparing you for like a job in like an office setting, or like maybe even to be a homemaker, like a stay at home wife. But like, you knew at that point that you wanted to do academics. So like, what was that process like for you to know that that's the direction you wanted to go? What was the the question was, how did you decide that that's the uh, the academic track was what you wanted to do? How did I decide? Well, I had a here I go talking with my father all the time, and uh, I just took it as it was a usual thing for me to go away to school because I wanted to learn what I wanted to be. I needed more education. So I know we're going to get ahead of ourselves, but did you? What did you do after you graduated high school? Did you go to college? I went to college. I went to the University of North Dakota. North Dakota. Wow. Yes. That's quite the uh, quite the move from Emmaus. And I, in looking at some stuff, I saw that your dad did move around a little bit. I know he was. The, we'll talk about him in a little bit. But so University of North Dakota. So we'll kind of leave that one there for a second. So you went from Emmaus to there. So it's your freshman year. You go in. You have your classes. What was and one of the so before we came, I asked my students what they had some questions, and they wanted to know some things like, do you remember the types of things that you actually learned during that freshman year? Like you talked about going to the Shakespeare play, yeah. But what do you remember like social studies as an example? What was it that you were learning about then? Um, well, our social studies was a, either a civic class or a history class. Okay. And, we learned all about what was happening within our own community as well as within the world. So to put it into context, you're starting high school right at the start of World War II, That's which right. is pretty amazing to think about. So were they teaching? So world now our students study World War One and World War II as like things that happened literally a hundred years ago for like World War One. So when you were in school, like, did you study about like World War One and like what was going on to cause oh, yes, World War Two? And it, um, the the town wasn't very large, and they had a, a lot of boys who were in World War One, and it just so happened that um, my my husband, I mean, I knew my husband at this time, and we his father used to have men come visit him who were in World War I and I used to sit in and listen to what they had to say as to what they had to do. They, they, they fought the World War in a different situation than they fought it in World War II. And I learned that by being there with the people. That's just so, that's like, we talk about like studying things that are current and like living history, but like, to have somebody that was there, like to be able to study, like what it was like for World War One, mm -hmm. leading into World War Two, and then kind of seeing the impact it had. That's just, as somebody sitting here, that's just really amazing to think that, like, we can talk to somebody that actually has that like life experience. So, like, so you studied English. You, you remember Shakespeare. You remember studying civics. Um, what do you remember? What you learned in math? Math was was a general course at that time. When I went to the other schools, I took geometry, I took trigonometry, and I took um, algebra. Okay, so you didn't, so our ninth graders now, they're learning like algebra and stuff right mm -hmm. away. So you were learning a little bit more of the basic math, but still, later on, you did geometry, trigonometry, algebra, which mm -hmm. here we are in 2023, and guess what the kids in, are learning in school? geometry, trigonometry, algebra. So, you know, as much as we think things have changed, there's still a lot of the same. Like our kids are still doing government class. That's in 12th grade now. Mm -hmm. They're learning history. They're learning American history as a ninth grader. 
they're learning about Shakespeare. I know our ninth grade students are reading Romeo and Juliet right now. So like, it's really cool to hear that like what you did in 1938, 39, was kind of very similar. Did you have a science class, do you remember? Oh, yes. Mr. Becker was my <laughs> science teacher, and I studied with him biology, chemistry, and physics. So they did all of that in one year? No. Oh. I mean, Mr. Becker, I took biology in ninth grade, but uh, the physics, the chemistry and physics were in the... Uh, like tenth and eleventh. Uh, so you had the same science teacher all throughout, and they st and he Mr. stayed Be with you. Mr. Becker, and Mr. Becker was a wonderful teacher because I found out when I went to the university and took those subjects, which I had to do. They said I had a wonderful teacher because <laughs> I knew a lot of these things that they didn't have to teach me. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's funny because now our ninth grade students, they take a class. It's more of like all the sciences together, but our 10th graders still take biology. Our 11th graders still take chemistry. And our 12th graders, maybe some 11th graders too, still take physics. So again, mm -hmm. the same subjects you were learning at Emmaus High School in, in that time, the kids are still learning about now. So the kids also asked me before I left, they wanted to know... When you went to school, did you have to wear certain, did you have a uniform or things that you wore to school? Because now kids, were, they're allowed to wear whatever they want to school. There's a dress code, but they were kind of curious to know if you had to get like dressed up and be fancy for school. No, uh, we, have, we, we had to wear dresses. We didn't wear slacks or jeans at that time. So that's something that they wouldn't, like the fact that you weren't allowed to wear basically pants. You were wearing dresses and, and that was through all of high school, which is pretty amazing to think like, you know, I know the community we're in may be a little conservative at that point, but, you know, was there, were there people that tried to come to school not wearing dresses, like wearing pants, or was it just all the girls wore dresses? We, we never did that any thought. We did, just, that's the way we, we did from first grade on up. We, did, you have, um, did you have like a gym class? Yes, I did. Did you have to change? for? I assume you had to change. We had to change yeah. into gym shows, and uh, that's one thing that we had to do. But then we had to change before we went back to class again. Do you remember what you did in gym class? Pardon? Do you remember what kinds of things you did in gym class? Oh, yes. We did acrobatics. We did, um, um, uh, we did, um, oh, heavens to Betsy. That's <laughs> what I mean, basketball. Oh, okay. And uh, we did uh, field hockey. Oh, well, uh, look at that. The, in 1938-39, the groundwork was laid for our amazing field hockey program here at Emmaus High School. They're still playing field hockey. We're really good at it if you're not <laughs> following along. So, so that's really interesting. Like, so you're doing all that same stuff. It sounds like very similar now. Obviously, kids are allowed to kind of wear whatever. So uh -huh. if the only time they're wearing dresses, we just had homecoming at the high school, and then they wore their fancy dresses to the homecoming uh -huh. dance. But other than that, everyone's wearing jeans. A lot of them wear pajamas to school. What would you say to people that wear pajamas to school? Well, that would, that's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only thing they had to wear. That's all right. But, I mean, they don't wear pajamas to school. <laughs> yeah, now kids are wearing all sorts of stuff. So it's really interesting to hear just even that. Like, when I was at the Historical Society, we saw a lot of the different stuff that was probably in, like, the 1960s, but, like, different uniforms, different stuff for the different clubs or organizations at the school. So I'm going to ask you in a second about that. But the other question that the kids wanted to know today was, and I, I don't know why kids are always obsessed with this question, but they wanted to know what the food was like. So did you have to eat school? At, did you eat lunch at school, or were you able to, like, walk home? Uh, we, we had to walk to and from school. Yep. Except those students that came from McKenzie, Thompson, Alberta, they came in on the train. On the train, so there was no buses. In they the came morning, <laughs> and they left on the train at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So they came in, so they had to be at school till 5, because that was the only time the train came through. The, the train came in around 7 in the morning. We did a lot of traveling with the train at that time. 
That's really interesting. Because they, it, they had passenger trains that stopped in the Mayas and picked up passengers. That's, again, didn't know. That's another part of a Mayas history I didn't know. But that's really interesting. They had to come in off the train. So, like, for lunch, were th did they do lunch at the school or were you allowed to, like, go home? You, ha you packed your lunch. You packed your lunch. You packed your lunch. So, do you remember what, what did you pack for lunch? What kinds of stuff? I walked to and from school. I so, didn't pack a lunch. Oh, so you were able to walk home for lunch? I was. Oh, one time I wasn't able to walk, to do that. My I sprained my ankle, and I was on crutches. And my dad said, "I'll drive you to school, but you have to walk home." So that's what I did. That was the one and only time I got a ride to school. So even in the snow, even in the rain. So you're so you are the story of the person that walked uphill in the snow yes. both ways to get to school. Yes, <laughs> I walked from third grade. To fifth grade. That's uh, third third street to fifth street. Yeah. And walk that every day. Yeah, that's really like that's really. And fun. I walked home for lunch at that too. And that's, that's, yeah, so the school I went to, I went to a small elementary school in Philadelphia, and we were able to walk home, like, for lunch every day, and when I tell the kids that I was able to leave for lunch, they were all jealous, like, that mm -hmm. we could leave, but, you know, when they let kids leave now, they don't come back, so I assume, a lot, I assume kids came back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you had to come back, I'm sure. Yeah, always. There was never a question about not coming back, no. I'm sure. And I don't think we ever spoke of that. <laughs> <laughs> you never thought to leave. No. Now, now the kids don't think about coming back, so that's why we can't oh, let them come oh, back. We can't let them out. So lots of good stuff from from there. So um, we were also wondering too about like school activities. So like, were you involved in any sort of clubs or sports or organizations when you were I in was, school? I was involved in basketball, and I was involved in the in the the gymnastics okay so bass was it like a did they have a girls team at that point we had a girls team and we had a winning team a winning oh uh, but i mean not in ninth grade but i mean uh, we as 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 i went through the classes we we had a good girls basketball team so uh, so i'm a I, I like basketball a lot too and we've had a lot of episodes on the podcast with basketball players so what what position did you play do you I, remember i, I was uh, uh, because I was tall, they had me as the uh, uh, as oh, the center, the center, and then I played guard. So you you were able to play all over the court. And we only played half court. Oh, uh, was that just all girls or just at the Mayas? Did we, they? You, you, the, the, I could go beyond a certain point. It was quite different than it is. They f used the full court. Yeah, absolutely. Do you uh, do you ever watch basketball now? Once in a while. Do you even recognize the game that they play now versus what you played in 1938? Well, it's, it's different. But like I say, when we did it, it was nice because all of us became good close friends that way too. Do you, so how many – this was one of my other questions. Was do you, Did you keep in touch with those people after you left the Mayas High School? Some of them uh, – well – when I went away to school, I was I was away from everybody. Yeah. And when I came back, I worked at the Allentown State Hospital. Okay. So I was away from a lot of them, but the thing that came kept us close together was our reunions, and we always went to the reunions. Yeah, and it was I I think I was actually talking to to Jeannie about this that now like. I think with everyone being so connected with like stuff on the computer and online that mm -hmm. I don't think they're as popular as they once were, but I know that she was just telling me that the class of 1964 had just met or 63, 64, and they, mm -hmm. they were just meeting. So like, did you have reunions like every like five years or so or five years or 10 years? How often did you have your reunions? We had them every year. Every year. So just kind of get togethers and, and kind of seeing uh, who was around. We had our pictures taken every time and when when i graduated we it was my 75th anniversary <laughs> and there were 10 of us there so 10 of you at the last at the at 75th the high school at that and it was uh, i remember a, a phoebe david a bruce sports uh paul howarder hertzog and I, I can't cry. Oh, Gladys Yale, myself, 
and we really enjoyed our, our get-togethers. And we all, like I say, we all had our own things to do. But that's the one thing that we wanted to do was to get together. Yeah, that's really cool too, that you were able to keep those bonds and keep that going. Like even after you left the Mayas High School, because we talk about that now too, about like what kinds of things people do after high school. So you went on after high school, you went on to the University of North Dakota. You mm -hmm. said you came back, you worked at the state hospital, and then you kind of stayed in this general area here. You stayed in the Mayas mm -hmm. and just... Um, you know, you've been here, have you been here ever since, or did you move around other places when you came back? Mm -hmm. You've been here? Yeah. So that's really, you know, so you've had a chance to kind of see Emmaus over a long period of time. So what would you say, like, a difference in Emmaus from when you were younger to now is? People aren't friendly like they were. Yeah. You knew everybody, and you... We did things together, like I said. If we, we, uh, well, Halloween time is here. We would take tri tri trick or treating. Yeah. And we used to throw corn at the houses <laughs> when we did that. So, and they had a Halloween parade and they gave out prizes to people. It was a quarter, maybe. <laughs> you know. But it, it was just. We enjoyed getting getting together with the people in town. So you gotta you, you gotta fill me in. What is the throwing of the corn? Was that like something that they did on like the night before Halloween, or was that a why why would you throw the corn? They didn't treat us. We threw corn at them. <laughs> <laughs> is that something that like was an Emmaus thing? I've never heard that. So yeah, is that yeah. no? That's. <laughs> Yeah, we used to, we did, we threw corn. Well, we're going to, we, I don't know, I don't know if we want to give our current students that idea to go around and throw corn at people's <laughs> houses if they don't get the stuff they want from Trick or Treat. Yeah. But, so you're saying that, like, so you said you were involved in basketball, gymnastics. Were there other, like, activities and stuff to do at the school at that time as well, too? Like, what were some of the other things you could get involved in? The hidden interviews where we played with, 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 between some of the schools. Yeah, within people there, yeah. Uh-huh. Were, was there like a drama department? Did they do like plays and theater? Well, we, we had a, a, a musical department. Okay. We had a glee club and we had a chorus and we put on, on shows. And we, we uh, let's see, what else did we do? Um, oh, we had a, a home economics teacher who was Mrs. McLean. And we talk home, they taught home economics to the women, and they taught the men how to handle a hammer and the nails and <laughs> so forth. And uh, we could take that course too, if we wanted you to. Are, and the boys could take the home economics course. They and they can do that now. We actually do have some stuff at the school that's very similar to that. We do have a class that they don't call it home economics anymore. Now it's called family and consumer science. Mm -hmm. And they can do, they learn like different stuff like that all throughout. And then we actually have some classes that are like the other classes that are like, they call it home maintenance. So they teach you how to do stuff around your mm -hmm. house, which I wish I had because I'm, you know, I don't know how to do anything around my house. So, but that's really cool. So you had all that. So it sounds like one of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is because I, I was trying to figure out what school was like for kids in that time and what school is like now. And without, it basically sounds like it was pretty similar. We did not have computers. We didn't have the telephones that they <laughs> have today. But we communicated with each other. And we had the library that we could go to. We had encyclopedias that we used instead of where we could look it up. Yeah. And we, we really learned to read because you had to read these things in order to learn them. So yeah, that was one of my things. Like, so you're obviously, you said no computers, no phones. We're, I assume we're still a little bit away from TV. So was there any, so it was, your school was like books, pencils, Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much about it. And communicating with each other, which not is, communicating to a phone. Yeah, which is awesome because right now it's funny because after we had the the COVID pandemic, we're we're getting back to teaching kids how to actually talk to each other in person again, well, and not good. through all the technology stuff. So, you know, back then, you like you said, they didn't really have much of a choice. You were either, you your know, your brain were, deteriorates if you don't use it. 
Well, I have to say this, you must be really using yours because the fact that you're able to remember all of these teachers, I went to, my ninth grade year was 1995. And I don't know if I can remember all of the teachers that I had in 1995, but you were just, you're going right down the list of all of your people from well, 1938. Have, let me see. Oh, you even wrote some more down. Pardon? You wrote some I more down. Some, yeah, I have, my teachers were Miss Busher, Miss Barry, Benfield, Becker, and Mr. Dyser. And Mr. Dyser taught civics and history. Mr. Benfield was our literature teacher. Mr. Becker was our, our science, biology, and so yep. forth. And Miss Beery taught English. Uh, I had Miss Busher at one time, but then Miss Beery took over. Yeah, that's just that you were able, whether you got it from the book or from your memory, to have that list is like, yeah. it's such, it, it's amazing to see all that kind of stuff. It, it's, it's wonderful. And we had an art teacher who was Mr. Walbert. And I loved flowers. And he had me make a, a picture of flowers. Do you, you don't still have it, do you? And he, he, was, he, he, uh, he taught us the colors and how to use them and how blue and uh, yellow or green. Yep. You know, so all that green. stuff. You don't, you don't happen to have that picture, do you? No. 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 I was going to say, because that would be amazing that if you had it. That was at school, and some <laughs> of those I never got back, so. So we're kind of starting to wind down here with our questions, but I did want to ask, because when I was doing, when I was looking you up online, I know you say you don't use the computer, but you're on there, so just so you know. So I saw that your dad was the town doctor and the school doctor for Emea. So what was it like to be the daughter of the, of the school doctor and the town doctor? No, nothing. I mean, I didn't look at it that way. He was my dad. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, yes, he was the doctor. But he went to the schools in the elementary school and examined each one of those children. Yeah. In there. Wrote down things so that the parents would be aware of, of things that they needed, not saying they had to do something about it because he was not everybody's doctor, but he was examining the school, the school kids. Yeah. You know. Did you get to learn any secrets about people that you didn't want to know? Did you I, did you learn any secrets about some of the kids, maybe by no, looking? Oh, you, you, oh, never, you never looked? He spoke <laughs> of things and spoke of what was wrong, but he never gave me the names of any <laughs> of them. It was the same way with his patients. He would tell me what their illnesses were and so forth, but never, never said anything. Well, that's good. I, so he's following all the oaths. So, you know, I, I would think as a, as a, as a curious kid, maybe you tried to sneak around and see no, what was going no. on. But I guess not. If you didn't, if you walked home from lunch and went back to school, I, I would assume that you're not the person that wants to go rooting through people's personal information either. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. When I was in the third grade, I remember this. Uh, my dad was, came to the school at that time and was examining the kids. And all of a sudden, the door opened, and in came my German shepherd. Oh. <laughs> and found my seat and sat beside me. And the teacher was a little upset because the dog wouldn't let her get near me. <laughs> so she had to get my dad to get the dog out. <laughs> That's really funny. We do now at the high school, we do have a dog there. It's a therapy dog that they bring in. So, <laughs> so there's one dog allowed in the school. You still have in your possession your 1942 Emmaus yearbook. Now at the Emmaus Historical Society, they have yearbooks, I think dating back from 1890-ish area. So I actually, one of the days, looked through that. It was really cool. So if you're ever near the Historical Society or know anyone or they're running an event, you can always go and look at the stuff there. Um, and we can kind of put some links in on how you can do that there. But So you have your yearbook here from 1942. So... Let's look through. I'm going to just look through real fast and see if we can find your graduation. So you have your name written in it. So just to show you the inside of the cover. So this is a Mayus High School from that time period. Um, this is the one that you said was on Fifth Street, right? So you didn't get a chance to be in the new building. No, no you were in, no. in Jeff good old where Jefferson Elementary is now. So let's see. Can we find you in here? Where would you be in the book? So, oh, that's right. So there you are. Look at we found you. Yep, that's me. So it even... 
interestingly, it says your address in there, which I think is really interesting that your address is listed in your yearbook. Mm -hmm. We do not do that now because yeah. for obvious reasons. And uh, there's something ironic here that David Jokes has a son. And believe it or not, he is in his son is is uh, a grown man now. Well, so and he sings in the choir with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I work at Emmaus High School and I share a room with Dave Yopes, and I think it might be his son. So I'll have to let him know that we can find him in the yearbook mm -hmm. here. So I, you know, I I think we joke all the time that all the Yopes are related yeah, somehow. It's, so like, like it's, it's quite a fellow. And it's, it's one of those things that I think is ironic because I meet people who are children of the people that I graduated with. Yep. So I'm going to read, I just want to read the activities that you were a part of here that it says in your 1942 yearbook. So it says you were in the chorus. So it sounds like you were still singing in the chorus. <laughs> you were in something called the Monitor Club. The with Monitor the Club was where we went and stood in the hallways when they exchanged classes to keep the quiet. <laughs> because not all classes changed at the same time. And they didn't want to interfere with the other classes. Now we have people that we pay to do that. So <laughs> no, I don't know. Do. I don't think anyone would be joining the monitor club at the high school. So it does list basketball. It lists girls athletic club. Was that was that the uh, like gymnastics or yes, and stuff you were talking did. about? Um, this one, I'm sure, was really wild. The knitting club? Yes. So what but did you do in the knitting club? I learned how to knit. And it is something that we were allowed to choose, whether we wanted to do that or not. And um, I don't do any knitting, no. No, no knitting and now? we learned how to sew <laughs> and embroider and so forth and that same thing. And then the last club that's listed here is the dancing club. So it was that, like, what kind of dancing were you doing in, in, in during that time? Just uh, modern, just regular <laughs> dancing. Mo modern dancing of 1940. Uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, we just, we did some waltzes and, and we did regular, uh, the two-step. That, that's that's awesome. Know. And how, how to dance with a partner. Well, yeah, that's, the, you know, the ballroom dancing type stuff, I guess, right? And then the last thing it says in here is that it's, I don't know if this was a production or something, but it says Murdered Alive. So what was Murdered Alive? I was I was the mystic medium in that play. Oh. <laughs> and, and it was called Murdered Alive. So, yeah, so you weren't murdered. So I'm looking down here, Beatrice, Beatrice M. Hefter was also in Murdered Alive, too. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh, and then there's a whole little paragraph here. Yeah. So the, your nickname was, how did, how did they say it? It's, it looks like Dudu in there, but it's definitely not. Was it Dodo? Is that What, what did they call you? Dodo. It's, Dodo was your nickname. Mm -hmm. So it says in here, engaging in sports is Dodo's way of passing time. So we don't get paragraphs anymore. But she does find time to read medical books and draw anatomy. So you were reading medical books and drawing anatomy in high school. That's pretty wild. Well, was, I, I was interested in the medical field. Yeah. And then it says the University of North Dakota is where she expects to spend her next few years studying to be a lab technician mm -hmm. and then become head technician in a hospital. And then you went to go work at well, Allentown. I, I went into occupational <coughs> therapy because that came out during World War II. OT, we called it. Yeah. And that's what I taught. Uh, that's what I did at the state hospital was occupational therapy. And we and, and even now we have occupational therapists come into school and work with our students. So again, another thing that was something that you were doing then, the, we're still doing now. I used clay in my, uh, uh, pottery. Uh, I studied that out at the university at the School of Mines also. The School of Mines, is that like in yeah, Colorado? That was, uh, no, North Dakota. Oh, North Dakota yeah. as well. And we used we the, how we started out in that class. We had to go out and dig our own clay. <laughs> I did that with my Girl Scout troop. Had them dig out their own clay because there's loads of clay here in the, this area. Because they used to make the school bricks that they put in the sidewalks here, and the, down below here are where the big kills that they had where they fired the brick. That's where the dump is now. 
Yeah, this is like stuff that like I was at Colonial Williamsburg last year, and this is the stuff you see in Colonial Williamsburg where they're doing, they're going out and they're making the bricks, and it's just, it's really interesting to talk to somebody that like that was their experience. Like you talk girls how to do, like talk girls first of all how to go out and do that, and like they learn how to make their own kill because they fired their own pieces that they did. (laughs) Basically, like very industrious, hard work. It sounds like hardworking people, and I think that's kind of one of the things that people always talk about Emmaus. It's like a tight knit community. People are, you know, good salt of the earth people, and it sounds like that's kind of what you were kind of seeing at that point. Emmaus was a very friendly town, and we got along with each other. I don't remember any fighting that went (laughs) on in the town that they talk about. Allentown, you had to stay away from certain areas, Yeah, which you did. Well, sad to say we do have some fighting at the school now, but we're trying to get it better. But Mm -hmm. it's just really interesting when you hear that and like the the tight-knit community of Emmaus and and what it was like. So I have one final question for you, and this is what I we ask this to all the guests. So if you were to give your best advice to somebody in ninth grade right now, you've lived... You've lived a full life. You you know, we're, we're right on the door of 100 years. So what would you say to somebody that's in ninth grade night right now for advice on either school or just how to, how to live life? What would you say to them? You have to, you have to get along with people. You're entitled to your opinion, and the same person that you're talking to is entitled to their opinions. And you try to talk it out and see which of the two opinions can be meshed together rather than fight about it. Now, I I know you might be liking Emmaus here, but do you want to like run for president and tell people that? Because that's, we need that a lot of places, not just at Emmaus high school. That's a great message to end on. And I really appreciate your time, you know, taking us back through Emmaus and taking us back through your ninth grade experience. And, um, you know, the, the information you shared, I think all the students will be in, in interested to hear. Our community members will be interested to hear. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for taking the time out today to join us. And so thank you very much for joining us here. Oh, and, welcome. you know, it was it great. Was, it, was, it was a pleasure. And I could keep talking like Jeannie knows. Uh, I, 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 I have to shut up because, you're not, you know, I have so many things I'd like to tell people. All right. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll have to schedule a second one of these because I had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sure the people that are watching this had a lot of fun hearing all this different stuff about what it was like back then. And maybe we can find out some more about your days in Emmaus and at Emmaus High School. So thank you so much for joining us, Doris. I appreciate it. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you.